I'm Philip Ball, I'm a science writer, and I'm the author of Serving the Reich, The Struggle for the Soul of Physics Under Hitler. I'm going to read a short section from the book that looks at the, the main character that I look at, Peter Debye, a Dutch physicist who became one of the most powerful figures in German physics during the Nazi era. In 1936, Peter Debye, now director of the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute of Physics, housed in its own premises in Berlin, decided that the newly constructed institute should be named in honour of the venerable colossus of German science, Max Planck. He anticipated resistance, both because traditionalists would be loath to disregard the imperial past and because Planck was considered politically suspect by the Nazi regime. Dubai's characteristic strategy was to make the decision a fait accompli by having the new name, the Max Planck Institute for Theoretical and Experimental Physics, carved in stone above the Institute's entrance. Ingenuously claiming that he simply wanted to give Planck a pleasant surprise on the Institute's inauguration day. It's said that when the Nazis predictably ordered him to remove it, Dubai instead covered it with a wooden plank. The pun works in German too. That was Dubai, boldly and wittily outflanking his opponents while struggling off political attempts to control and manipulate his science. At least so the story suggests. But there is no first-hand record of the Planck incident, and it's quite possibly no different to many such other tales in science history, retold for the sake of its lustre without regard to documentary evidence. All the same, Dubai did rename his institute and thereby set in train a process by which eventually the entire Kaiser Wilhelm Gesellschaft, the research network at the heart of German science, became associated with the foundational role of Max Planck. It is today the Max Planck Gesellschaft and its research centres are all Max Planck Institutes. I decided in the end to, to look at three physicists from this era. Um, two of them are fairly, fairly well known, Max Planck and Werner Heisenberg. Um, along with Peter Debye. They are all figures who occupied this grey middle ground between collusion and resistance. I think you could, you, one would have to say that they fall into neither of those camps. Um, and I think in that respect, they're actually representative not only of most German scientists, but of most German citizens. Um, that, you know, it's easy for us to know how to think about the people who were out and out sympathisers of the Nazis and also uh, to think about people like Einstein who were outspoken critics of them. But it's the people in between, the majority, really, that we find it, I think, hardest to, to know how to, to think about. There were a lot of ambiguities about uh, these, these three figures, and I think that's, that's what makes them interesting. The, 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 the whole idea of using quantum physics as a sort of metaphor for you know, understanding or at least thinking about what these people were doing is, is, I think, a good one, because there is no right answer that we can get to here. And I think you know, that's, that's why we have to really try to find some way of thinking and talking about this period without making simplistic and easy judgments about the, the people involved. For some of the scientists involved, and I think this is true of, of Dubai, it was perhaps too tempting to use science as a shield against having to confront some of these difficult moral questions. I think it's something that there is still the potential for today. Um, that, you know, again, one hears uh, some suggestions that science is a kind of a, a higher calling than this messy world of politics and economics and, you know, social reality that we live in. Um, and there are dangers in that. It was incredibly interesting and engaging to, to find out, you know, some of what went on during this period. But inevitably, it's quite a bleak period. And I think one of the bleakest things about it was seeing how hard it is for people in a situation like this to maintain some degree of integrity. And so in that way, I think it was probably um, a humbling experience to, to write the book. It's lovely to be to be recognised in this way. And, you know, it's also very nice that I feel I'm delighted to have got this far. I don't really mind what comes after.